Hey now, what's up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and this is number two of my Valentine's Day movie reviews. The first film I didn't do too well with. So this time I'm here to review Valentine's Day. Easy enough, right? This is a 2010 film that was directed by Gary Marshall, who I'm sure some people know because he directed Pretty Woman. They're romantic comedies and they're an ensemble cast, which means that there's tons and tons of stars all in this one movie. And basically like it's either holiday themed or whatever. Like this film, it's on Valentine's Day. So you're following different uh, characters or couples in different forms in different types of relationships. Some of them are happily in love. Others are just breaking up, getting out of a relationship. Some people hate Valentine's Day. Some people love Valentine's Day. And it's two hours of this bullshit. <laughs> okay, so uh, obviously you could tell what I think of this movie. This movie is not good. It's not good at all. The, the negative strikes that this movie has is basically what these movies are. In general, it's it's too much. It's too much juggling. It's too much storylines going on. It's too many plots going on in one movie. I could understand if you had two, maybe three of these plots going on at the same damn time. Okay, because some of them might be even a little clever in how they interconnect and how certain characters are related to other ones. But when you have like nine stories and somehow each story has a connection to one another, it's like, okay, this is not only coincidental, not only bullshit, but this is so Hollywood fluff, it's ridiculous. And sometimes you can only take so much of that romantic comedy fluff so much. Let's go through these characters, shall we? One of the main, main stories is Ashton Kutcher, who at the very beginning he proposes to Jessica Alba, his girlfriend, and she accepts. So everything should be fine, right? Until he notices that she's not wearing her wedding ring uh, like that same day. She's not, she wants to keep it a secret. She doesn't really want to tell people. So he gets upset. He starts to realize that, okay, maybe this girl doesn't want to marry me. Then you go to uh, Jennifer Gardner, who is Ashton Kutcher's best friend. She's been dating Patrick Dempsey, who she's in love with also. But Ashton Kutcher, who works at a flower shop, sees Patrick Dempsey come in, and he wants to give not only his girlfriend... Jennifer Gardner flowers, but he also wants to give his wife flowers. Oops! So now Ashton's in a dilemma, not only in his relationship, but whether or not he should tell Jennifer Gardner. Drama, drama, drama. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Jamie Foxx is like a sports uh, anchor or whatever, and he doesn't like Valentine's Day either. So then, of course, he meets uh, Jessica Biel who's best friends with Jennifer Garner. It's all connected. I'm just more surprised that they let Jamie Foxx, a black guy, date Jessica Biel, a white woman, in one of these types of movies. I know it's 2016 at this point, only 2010 at that point, but I feel like in Hollywood mainstream movies, it's so infrequent that we see interracial couples or anything that's out of the the usual Hollywood norm. So I can give the movie that, although it wasn't the main story. You have Eric Dane as Sean Jackson, a football player who's contemplating retirement. And honestly, talk about one of these side plots that you do not give a fuck about. Holy shit, I'm sitting there like, am I supposed to feel fucking bad for this guy? Am I supposed to care? I honestly, when I was sitting there, I was thinking, wow, this guy's not that great of an actor. Maybe he's a, like a real football player that they got. So I looked him up. No, he's an actor. He's not a football player. In fact, he's on Grey's Anatomy. So I'm like, well, fuck. Damn. Okay. You have Anne Hathaway. I know, Anne Hathaway is in a fucking movie like this. And she starts to date Topher Grace. Wow. 
When was the last time you heard that name? And they just had sex, I guess, for the first time. I don't know if it was like a hookup or what, but he likes her. So he tries to like actively pursue her now. But the problem, I guess, is that she also has a second job where she does phone sex. So I guess that's a big issue now. Because yeah, if you're dating Anne Hathaway, that's really going to stop you. But I'm telling you, in a Hollywood movie like this, these are like supposed to be serious issues. Supposed to be issues that that's supposed to create all of this drama and all of this shit that you're supposed to care about and you're sitting there like, wow, none of this is really that fucking big of a deal. You're watching grown women freak out and complain over not having a valentine. This is something that girls used to do in high school. Maybe women in their 30s, 40s complain about this now if they're single on Valentine's Day. Maybe. But really, at the end of the day, who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, really? This is what we're all crying and bitching and complaining about. Emma Roberts is also in this film. She and her high school boyfriend want to lose their virginities to each other. So that's really unnecessary. She... Uh, she looks after this kid. She's like a babysitter. Uh, and, and that kid's story... Yes, even the little kid she babysits has a fucking story in this movie. Everybody has a story. The mailman has a story. The, the crossing guard has a story. Everybody has a story. This little kid, he likes somebody in his class. It's a whole fucking mystery because even that has to be played up for drama on who this 11-year-old kid is likes on Valentine's Day. <laughs> who gives a fuck? Uh, you have Taylor Swift, who is dating Taylor Lautner. They're both in high school, very young, love, and I guess the point of their story is that here's two high school kids who are in love, so they're very over the top with their lovey doveyness and it's kind of sickening to watch, but I will say this. The amusing thing about them dating is not only that they, well, they dated in real life during this time, and that they're both named Taylor. That's funny. But the fact that they probably only dated for like six months, so they did this movie together, like broke up by the time I think the movie came out. Oops, but that's Taylor Swift's life, right? She dates guys and breaks up with them after less than a year, and then writes a song about them. So it all works out in the end, I guess. Bradley Cooper, he's here for whatever reason. He's on an airplane with Julia Roberts, who's coming home for like a day. Uh, she's in the military, so she only gets like one day to come in, and and you're just seeing the two of them on a plane, meeting each other and talking to each other. I like them as actors. I do. And even their scenes, like, they're good actors, they're, you know, they have some chemistry, they're likable, but it's really pointless their scenes, their stories, I don't get it. I don't get why this movie has to be two hours. I could have hand-picked, cherry-picked so many scenes, so many side stories that wasn't needed, and I could have made this an hour and 20 minutes. And even that is probably too long, but at least that would have been the length of a feature film. You have Queen Latifah as Anne Hathaway's boss, because why not? You have Kathy Bates, who's here for like two scenes, but she gets like top billing in the credits. George Lopez is Ashton Kutcher's friend, which is like, okay, come on, really? I can't see these two guys hanging out together in real life. I mean, yeah, they work together, so that's probably the real extent of their friendship, but it was just kind of funny. You have Hector Alizanda, who... I like as an actor, it was cool to see him like again, because I don't really see him as much anymore. But again, not needed. His story, not needed. Like half of these stories, if not more, was unneeded. This movie's too long. All of these cliched things that are so predictable, you could tell what's gonna happen. You've seen and a shitload of romantic comedies, and it's almost like they took every plot to a romantic comedy for the last 20 years and threw it all into one movie. Wow, wow, wow. And if you're somebody who doesn't like Valentine's Day as a holiday, this movie won't make you like it anymore. In fact, you will hate it even more.
Fuck this movie, Valentine's Day. Seriously, I'm trying. I'm trying to broaden my horizons. I'm trying to see... I'm, I'm trying to give these movies a chance for the holiday, and it's not working. It's not. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you saw this movie, too. Or, I mean, do you have any recommendations? Like, just give, give me one good uh, Valentine's Day-themed movie, romantic-themed movie. I don't know, just something. Please. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! <laughs>